It's the American Conference on ESPN as the Yukon Huskies face the USF Bulls from the USF Sundome in Tampa, Florida. Anthony Collins, a pass first point guard. Very adept at penetration, as we saw. UConn being very stingy on defense. Brima goes down, lost it inside, gets back up and makes the block. What an effort by Brima. He missed. Kept alive inside. But here comes UConn. Purvis. And Murillo's been relatively consistent, although just five of the last 21 attempts from the field until that shot. Omar Calhoun, number 21, is in for the first time for UConn. There's a follow by Hamilton off the miss. But entry passes. Boatwright trying to change it, gets it out to Calhoun, but he's got a reset. Goes down the lane, drops it off. Kenton Facey with the bucket. Well, he's better than 70%, so whatever he is doing is working pretty well. Boatwright. Nice play defensively, got away from Mercurius. They can't get their arms extended to block the shot without creating contact. Collins, one out of two from the line. Nice move. Beautiful drive. Terrence Samuel switches to the left hand and lays it in. Running the court, very good fast break executed by USF. The lead is six. Pull up jumper is good. Slowly but surely, UConn closing the gap because they're playing with more aggression. Sam Cassell Jr. hits the bucket, draws the foul. Both teams starting to heat up a little bit. Calhoun with a miss. Long tip out to Cassell. Gets it inside and Brima. For USF on the offensive glass, running the floor. He has six oh, points inside, and there is Brima. USF coming right back at you. Purvis cut off the baseline. Good ball movement, and Calhoun able to knock it down. A three for the Huskies. Cassell gets the screen, goes down the lane, a little fadeaway, short. Brima offensive rebound. How important are those offensive rebounds for UConn? That's what we're talking about. Better quality three-point shots coming off the offensive rebound. Huskies up by two. So you can't pick up your dribble no, under sure 10 can't. if you're a point guard. Now you're going to break them down. Cassell with a runner in and out. There's the follow, though, from Rakeem Lubin. Second chance points for UConn. 14 of the 28. USF playing the same kind of tight defense they did when they started the game. Now Boatwright goes baseline and gets the jumper in this ball game after the initial five or six minutes. Allowing Boatwright to be the shooting guard and Hamilton with a runner in the lane. Corey Allen Jr. down the lane with a runner. Brima's right there to block it. You know, when he finally realized he had no outlets, he had to take that shot. Yeah, under no, the rest. Nobody opened except me, and I'm five feet from the bucket, so I'm going to take it. Purvis, nice drive. Kind of threw the team out of rhythm, and when they couldn't get it because of the good UConn defense, you know, they wound up fumbling it away. Another missed opportunity coming down and not getting a shot. And USF, not a team that can make up points very easily either with their lack of outside shooting in that first 12 14 minutes of putting the ball in the basket you know they're starting to execute with confidence now and that is amazing a team that had the fewest second chance opportunities coming into this game has been tremendous on the offensive glass and it's really all about moving without it made a concerted effort to go get it, particularly on the well, weak side. And you see the blue shirts not only had the weak side covered, certainly had the middle covered, as South Florida now is relegated to just standing around. Went all the way out to the corner to challenge the jump shot, and Collins had free reign. I'm sorry, not Collins, Guerrero had free reign in the middle. Calhoun. 
excuse me, Hamilton. UConn playing some pretty tough defense. It's been really hard for USF to get a shot. Boltwright, great anticipation, lays it off for Purvis. Twelve minutes to go in this ball game. Calhoun left alone, and they did a good job of getting him the basketball in position to shoot. You know, they're going to be playing a couple of tough teams upcoming. Conference play, familiarity, breeds contempt. Doesn't matter if you're undefeated or not. Grima with his fifth block got to the Ziegler shot before it reached its apex. And Hamilton with a beautiful lob to Grima. The clock on each possession. Boatwright has to dump it in the corner, gets it back with two on the shot clock, has to launch and knocks it down. Ryan Boatwright with 10 points, the first man in this game into double digits. That was an escape hat. Sure. The guys who stayed, you got to take your hat off to them. You know, guys like Perry Allen Jr., Anthony Collins. Ryman, nice spin, gets the bucket, draws the foul. You know the guy that started all of that, Joe Russell back in the day. You know, the big lumbering centers couldn't stay with him, and he would sprint down the floor, three or four easy baskets. Speaking of which, nice dish to Kenton Facey. Purvis had a shot passed on and after the bobble. Hamilton, nice lob to Brima. The second time he's been able to penetrate. One of the questions about Hamilton this year, would he be able to handle the ball? Because he didn't do much of that in high school. Okay. Give Connecticut a lot of credit. You know, they dug themselves a deep hole early, but it wasn't deep enough. And South Florida never really able to capitalize. And then the Huskies turned it on, playing basketball the way Kevin Ollie would like to see him play. Now they were down 13 to 6 and not shooting the ball well, not handling it well, not playing good defense either. The final, UConn 58, USF 44.